Hey guys, it's Code Sane here, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to create assemblies in SolidWorks. So, assemblies, uh, like I mentioned in the first video, are basically how you use your parts to create different objects and different shapes using those parts. So, a lot of the times in robotics, like one part isn't enough to do a task, so we have to combine different uh, parts together and create an assembly. So, you've created assemblies before in robotics if you've done it before. It's basically just creating like a robot. So, a robot is a massive assembly. But in SolidWorks, what we're going to be doing is using uh, assemblies to create those robots or that those initial systems um, within like a CAD environment and then making sure that it's all okay, there's no spacing issues and whatnot. So uh, in this video, we're going to be using the parts that were created in the last video. So if you haven't created those parts uh, and you don't have them, then make sure you go check it out. It's essentially just a cube with a circle in it and then a hex shaft, like a cylindrical rod. So make sure you have those parts ready to go and then we'll start this video. So let's move to the screen now. And as you can see, I've got my desktop open. I've also got SolidWorks already open. So once again, I've x like all of the previous files. Now I can hit home. And I've got my two files from recent um, folders before. Now, instead of creating a part file, we're now gonna create an assembly file. Now, in SolidWorks, these two things are very different. So part files, you can only focus on one object at a time, whereas assemblies, as we'll see now as we click it, um, it's gonna be a very different environment. Also, assemblies are generally like heavier on your system. So if your laptop slows down a little bit, that's understandable, like it's okay. Um, so as you create an assembly, the first thing it's gonna to want to do is open like a shape or a different part because assemblies are basically just how you use parts and how you put them together. So for now, if you remember, test was like my cube. So I'm gonna open up my test and you'll see that my test, uh, my cube kind of just drops down and I'll hit okay, like I'll click the middle button and now this cube is now fixed. So you may be like, well, how is this different? The first thing I'm gonna explain is you have the same tabs as before. So you can do sketches if you want to, but it's not gonna be as like precise and in depth. So the main thing when it comes to assemblies is essentially this mate button. We'll explain how this mate button works a little bit later. Uh, another difference between parts and assemblies is we're not gonna need our planes. So beforehand we had our top plane, right plane, and front plane shown. We don't need to show this, so it's okay if you don't have it. Lastly, to explain what's going on here, so history will kind of explain everything that's happened beforehand. So as you can see, I've got this F test one. Um, what this means is that this is now this cube here. So once I click, once I hover around this, uh, the cube will be selected. So as you add more parts, you'll see more of these part files that kind of drop into this um, left tab here. You have your planes, but we can close the annotations. Um, we don't need to worry about sensors. And then for history, if you create like a mistake, you can always press Control Z. Or if you have like a previous um, move that you did beforehand, you can kind of go into your history and see what's going on. As you get more accustomed to assemblies, uh, you'll be a lot more comfortable with this sidebar here and you kind of know what everything is. Another thing I want to explain is the first shape that you uh, like introduce to your system, it's gonna be fixed. So if we try and move it around, so I'm clicking it and I'm trying to move it, it says the select component is fixed, it cannot be moved. The reason why is because it's the first object that you brought in. When you have an assembly file, the whole thing really can't be moving. Um, you want one part to be fixed and then as you add more parts to it, then those parts will be able to move, but if the whole system is moving, it's gonna create some dramas. So if you really wanna move it, you can right click and then um, you can see here, if you press float, now this whole thing can now move. Like it's fine, you can move this around, there's like no issues, but I'll keep it fixed. So right click again and press fix. <clears throat> Another difference is you'll see how this F kind of comes up. So if you press float, this F will disappear and the F means fix. Um, so if it's fixed, it's all good and it's not gonna move. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna bring in another part file. So to introduce another file, press insert component. And now it's gonna open up like the previous. To get to it, um, I had everything in robotics and in SOLIDWORKS and in parts. Now, instead of introducing like a different part, I'm just gonna introduce the same part. So now I've got two of these squares, two of these objects. So once it's come in, like you can now choose a location for it, right? So when you introduce new parts, there are a few things you can do. Once you click um, your left cursor or your, like your left button on your mouse, then that part is gonna be like fixed and you can move it afterwards. But what helps is kind of moving it close to your original parts. So as you can see, there's some distance, like this is away. So I can move this closer 
and then there's also some distance there so I'll just kind of move this as close as I can to my cube and I'll press the button and as you can see it kind of moved pretty close but not entirely close so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain how you can combine two objects together in SolidWorks so as I explained before to do this it's called mating now what mating does is it basically takes two objects and it aligns them in certain ways to connect them together so I've got my two cubes here like visually um, to kind of help explain what's going on I've also got the circles labeled in on either side ultimately what we want to do with our CAD file is we want to take these two and we want to combine this and place it perfectly on top of one another that's going to be our goal or our intention for today uh, one thing you'll notice is that when you do that our, our circles will perfectly line up because the circles are exactly the same uh, another thing you'll notice is that these two faces will be against each other and one final thing you'll notice is that these two will be parallel to each other so for example if I move this slightly as you can see this shape this face here is not parallel to this face because the line the lines kind of they intersect um, so what we need to do is to make them parallel so I just explained three different things and these are going to be three different mates in SolidWorks so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do it so the first one and the most logical mate um, is going to be to align these two circles with one another right so let's go ahead and do that in SolidWorks so to do that all we need to do is basically there are a few ways to make things um, there's a quick way and then there's a slow way I'm just going to teach you the quick way because it's basically like the general way to do things so if you want to align these two circles all we need to do is press the circle so make sure you hit just like the circle uh, it's gonna like highlight that part and now you need to move around and that part will stay highlighted once you have clear view of the other circle press shift and then select the other circle right now once I deselect you'll notice that there are a bunch of pop-ups that come up so that kind of disappeared quite quickly so what I'll do is I'll redo it so I'll press this circle here once again if you press the cylinder like see how it's going through the whole cube that's fine um, it's kind of up to you like it won't make a difference and I'll explain why later so we'll zoom out press shift once we have a clear view of our circle press it and now I'm gonna let go of shift once I let go of shift there are f uh, three or four different options that we have here so these are now your mates that are available to you down here so you don't have to worry about this top box here just this small box here so the first one is a coincident mate so a coincident mate what it'll do is it'll basically slap those two shapes together so for example if you want to make this face here and this face here you just coincident mate them um, and basically those two faces will be together something that you need to notice is that just because they're together it doesn't mean like they're fixed so for example if this is our fixed cube if I've coincident mated this shape and this shape and I put it together this thing can still move like laterally this way and forward and back this way um, the reason being is because these two faces they're kind of like they're a plane so it extends across the whole 3d space and this will be a plane extending across the whole 3d space so coincident will just move those faces together it won't like perfectly line up these two objects now in our case what we need to do is we need to make these two circles coincentric coincentric just means basically you take this circle and you imagine the center point and you take this circle and you imagine there's a center point here and it's going to line up those two center points to be exactly the same now once again just like the coincident mate just because these are lined up it doesn't mean they're together this can still move forward and back this way but these two circles will still be like lined up now it can't do this because now the circles are not lined up so once you coincentric made it these two objects they're gonna stay within the same line if that makes sense now if that doesn't really make sense it's okay because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do it in SolidWorks and once you try that for yourself it'll become a lot clearer so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit the coincentric mate and now as you can see the two objects move together and it looks like we've achieved our goal but once again we're gonna try and move our cube and you can see like this cube still fully moves around like it's not together so the reason why it's not together like I mentioned if I move here these two circles are perfectly in line but there's space between them and that's because I've just coincentric mated them uh, we'll come around to how to making everything like perfectly on top of each other like this later but before we do that let's explain exactly what we just did so we mated these two circles together and as you can see if you go down to mates we have our mate right here 
Um, and it's important to be able to recognize this left hand tab and everything you've done before. If you go into history, you also see that the first thing we did was introduce our first cube and then import our second cube. And now we've done a mate to them. So those are the three things we've done. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to coincident mate these two faces together. So I'm going to click this face and now I've um, selected the whole face. I'm going to move it around so I have view of the second face. I'm going to press shift. So see how this blue is still highlighted? So this, if I press shift, then it's going to highlight both at the same time. Let go of shift. And now we have a bunch of options again. Okay, so once I've let go of shift, there are a few more mates here. Now, in reality, there are only four regular mates you can do. So we've already talked about the concentric one. It basically takes two circles. It takes their center points. So for this one, it's here. And for this one, it's here. And it'll line up those center points. And like the two objects cannot be like uh, moved away from that line. So that's what concentric mate does. We've also briefly spoken about coincident mating. So that just slaps two faces together. So if you want to take, that's exactly what we're going to do now. So it takes this face here and it takes this face here, like the whole square, and it'll move them together. Now, just because these two squares are coincident, it doesn't mean that um, that they can't move away from each other unless they're coincentric mated. So this can still move this way and that way and this way and that way, because if you remember, it's the plane that we're talking about, not just this face. Now, once we coincident mate and we coincentric mate, that means that this has to be here and the two holes have to be lined up. Now, we'll see if this actually solves our problem. The other two mates, they're called perpendicular mating, which basically, as it sounds, it takes two faces and it'll line up perfectly. So if these two, if this was a line here and this was a line in this one here, as you can see, as in my picture here, this line is coming up this way and that line is this way. So these aren't parallel. If you want to make them parallel, we'll just perfectly line them up like this. And then perpendicular mating is just the opposite of that. So perpendicular just means right angle. So if you want to place this face at a right angle to this face, it'll just be something like that. And as you can see, it creates that right angle right there. So those are the four mates you can do. You don't have to memorize them because as we go on, we'll talk about all four of them and we'll use all four in different ways. So uh, as I've let go of shift, there's this coincident mate here. And now as you can see, my object now has two mates. So if we go down here, there are two mates within our object. Um, so I can close this here. And what I can do, it's kind of slowing down, but now I can kind of move around and I can see that my square is my, my two cubes actually. They're not perfectly on top of each other, but it's like a lot closer than it was before. So if I try to move this around, I'm trying to move up and down and I can't move, up, move it up and down. The reason why I can't move it up and down is because these two squares are on top of each other. Um, basically because they're, they're coincident mated. What I'm going to do very briefly, you don't have to do this, you can kind of just explain, see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to my history and I'm going to delete the coincentric mate. Okay, the reason why I do it, so if I hit coincentric mate, you'll see that my two circles are highlighted. Right click and I'm going to delete it. So you don't have to do this, so just watch what I'm going to do. Press yes. So now, my two circles, I've only got one more mate like one mate currently. I've just got these two coincident mated. And now you can see, I've actually, I'm actually moving this around like there's no dramas. But if you remember, there's still that coincident mate that should move these together. So just because it looks like they're together, it doesn't mean they are. So if I see, if I move this around, these two squares are still perfectly on top of each other and I can keep moving it. All this means is that they're lined up. This, this face and this face are still lined up. They share the same plane, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I can still move this around, no dramas, no issues. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Control Z. And what that should do is hopefully bring back my coincentric mate. Okay, so now we're back to where we were originally. So you guys should have two mates now, the first coincentric mate and then the second coincident mate. So let's try and move around our square and see what happens. As you can see, these two mates are doing a pretty good job. This, the circles are staying in line with each other. And this shape here, like this face down here, and this face over here. They're actually on top of each other pretty good, but these sides, they're not staying on top of each other. So what this means now is basically the third mate we have to do, you can think about it yourself, but I'll tell you now, is basically just selecting this square here, press shift, and then this square here. Once you let go of shift, once again, we're gonna hit parallel. What parallel does 
is it now fixes these two sides and these two sides. So now, once I do that, I've got my first mate, which was the coincentric mate. So it'll move these two circles together. But this thing can still move this way and that way. Once I add my second mate, which was the coincident mate, these two faces are now slapped together, but they can still move along the same plane, right? So this can still do this, and the circles still have to stay, stay perfectly lined up. The, the third mate I'm gonna do now is moving this side and this side perfectly together. Combining all three of these mates, my cube should now not move in theory. So now let's go to our square and let's try and move it. As you can see, it says the component is fully fixed or fully defined, it cannot be moved. And this was our first fixed component. So now, as you can see, we've created, like we've achieved our goal. We've uh, basically just um, taken this cube and put it on top of the other cube. And now this is now fully fixed. Now, generally speaking, you're always going to need a few mates to combine things together. Uh, and actually, most of the time it's three. So using our three mates, as you can see here, our cube is now fully defined and now it cannot move. This is how you combine things in SOLIDWORKS. You use mates. So those were our three mates. If you kind of want to see like each mate individually, um, all you have to do is we'll press this mate button here. So once again, make sure nothing is selected. Press mate. And now you see we have our main four mates. These are what we call our standard mates. So we have the coincident mate, which just puts two things together. Like, but they share the same plane, so it can still move around along the same plane. We have the parallel mate, which takes two sides, and it'll make them parallel to each other, perfectly like this. Uh, we then have our perpendicular mate. We have we didn't use this one yet, um, and in reality, this is like the least used one, at least in FTC and our purposes. But it'll take two sides. So let's just say I select this side here and this side, and it'll place them on top of one another, and it'll create that 90 degree angle right there that's perpendicular to each other. And then the last one, it's quite common because we have a lot of circles in our parts. We're gonna take two circles and we're gonna coincentric mate them. Once again, just think about like, take this circle and think about the center, take this circle and think about the center, and then draw a line between those two centers and it cannot deviate from that line. So using those four standard mates, we've pretty much done our job. Now there are more complicated mates and we'll actually learn about them a bit later on if they come up. Um, but for now, we can kind of just think about these four mates as the mates that we're going to use. Um, and that's how we combine shapes in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to exit from this mate tab, but all our three mates are still here. So something else we can do is we can go into each individual part. Um, as you can see, this was our first part and this was our second part. We can go down and we can see the mates in that part. So they're the three mates. These three mates are the exact same as these mates. but these mates are basically like all of our mates in our whole assembly. So if we introduce a new part, like they're all gonna be here. Same thing with history. This is everything we've done in the past. So if you just wanna see mates within a certain object, click the object, go to the drop down menu, and then click mates. As you can see, we have our three mates within that cube. Okay, so now that we have our two cubes on top of each other, perfectly mated and fully defined, meaning that this cube cannot move, we can now add another component. So just to wrap up this video, we're going to now introduce our hex shaft. So I'll insert component and hex shaft and press open. So for a lot of assemblies, basically all we're gonna be doing is introducing objects and then mating them. So uh, introduce component and then make component. That's gonna be basically a lot of our assemblies. So once again, I have a choice now, right? My hex shaft is kind of far away. Um, we can move it or we can just introduce it like a little bit closer. Another thing you can do, and this gets kind of technical, but basically we can, say you don't like the orientation of this, you can go here and move this around. So you can now move this 90 degrees this way or move it that way. Personally, um, this really doesn't matter at the moment because we're gonna be doing a lot of assemblies later on, but we'll just keep moving this closer and closer and we'll try to get it as close to the square as possible. So once again, all I'm doing is I'm zooming out and then orbiting around. That's basically all you need to do to navigate kind of like what I'm doing. And we'll just leave it here. So at the moment, I'm not really sure. See, like my estimate was pretty bad. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because I can just move it upwards. And now it's kind of close up. So what do we want to do? So thankfully, I've got my cube, my little hex shaft again. And this time, let's just say, for example, let's play around, right? Let's just say we want to take our two cubes and slide them onto. So these aren't actually holes, so I can't do it. But in SOLIDWORKS, we'll just kind of 
slide them onto the, the hex shaft like you would an FTC, kind of like a shaft collar. And then we'll move it around and we'll see if we can mate anything um, or we can define anything. So first things first, if we want to make this circle perfectly in line with these circles, all you have to do is take one of these circles and basically to make circles in line, you're gonna use a concentric mate. So press shift once you've selected the first one. As you can see, we have two circles here. Now don't get too confused, right? Because concentric mate, all it does is it'll take a point on the circle, the middle point, and it'll align it with another middle point. If you notice this inner circle here, has an inner point here and this outer circle because like they were chamfered exactly correctly these two circles share the same point so it doesn't really matter which circle you take so press shift press the circle and now we're going to concentric make these two objects and another thing we did when we were designing our parts is we made them perfectly the same so now as you can see i can slide these uh this kind of in and out and exactly where we need it so now this is kind of looking uh like a lot like uh, an exact component or something you may use um, basically in FTC. So what I'll do is I might as well teach you guys how to copy paste things, right? So for example, let's just say I want two of these two cubes. So at the moment I have two cubes and they combine together. Let's say I want to make another set of two cubes together. All I have to do is you basically drag and make sure you just drag the cubes. So I'll move this kind of far away and then I'll drag the cubes. There are a few ways you can do this. This is the fastest way I found. Press Control C, and then once it's all highlighted, and then press Control V. And now this whole thing, once again, it's it's made it exactly as you would want it. But something that you'll notice is that this this has been mated beforehand, so this can only go in and out this way. But this has not been mated yet to the rod. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take this circle here. And just because they're far away, it doesn't mean you can't mate them. So I'm going to mate these two circles, even though they're far away, and you'll see what happens. So I'll take that circle, and it's not coming up, so I probably didn't select something correctly. So we'll take this circle again, and then we'll take this circle right here. We'll take the outer one this time, just to show that it doesn't really matter. And then we'll coincentric mate them. And as you can see, it looks like it decreased, but all it did was it moved around. So now these two um, kind of objects are now perfectly in line with the um, with the hex shaft. So this can still move around this way and that way. And if you think about it logically, there's no real way to fix this. Like you can probably, so in SOLIDWORKS, there are no screws and there are no nails. Uh, to put things together, we just make them. So if you think about this logically, you can insert a screw kind of like this way and that way, but even then, like this, this object still won't be fully defined in real life. Um, and in reality, we can't fully define this object along this hex shaft because there just aren't enough mates to do it. So what we're gonna do is I want let's just say I want to make this kind of here, and I want to make this these two squares um, the same on the other side. Now I can't move these squares because if you remember, th this square was fixed. So all I have to do is I have to right click it and then press float. And now hopefully this whole thing will move. Yep. Now something else you can do is if you still want like this whole thing can now move around um, like the whole object. And that can be a bit like difficult to work with. So if you want, you can fix the hex shaft. So I'll just fix that. And now basically the hex shaft is what we'll work off. So that's basically like using all of our components. If you want to, you can kind of move this together and this together. Now what we're gonna try to do is basically to make this this shape here, this face here and this face perfectly in line. So I can't really show it with the visual because I don't have a hole here, but it's gonna be kind of like this. You may think you wanna parallel make this, right? Because this line and this line have to be parallel, but you can try it and you'll find that that actually doesn't work. Just because this is down here, this line here is parallel like that, and that line is parallel like that. So these two lines are still parallel. To basically slap these two faces together, all you have to do is coincident mate it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to like coincident mate these two faces together. So all you have to do is you have to click this and press shift, click the circle, and make sure you click coincident, not parallel. As you can see, it kind of moves slightly forward. Uh, and the reason why I did that is because now these are perfectly in line. So now this thing is fully defined onto the hex shaft in terms of like uh, the um, in terms of 
the the distance on the hex shaft. This thing can still rotate around and it will always still rotate around. Kind of like a shaft collar. If you think about the shaft collar, um, it's the thing that tightens onto the end of a hex shaft. That thing can still rotate around. Like, uh, And this in reality will always rotate around. Now, let's do the same thing for the other side. So it may look like it's already made it, but I'll just drop it a bit and then just to visually show you exactly what's gonna happen. I'll press this face, shift, I'll press this face and we'll coincident made it and it moved up. So now these are perfectly mated on the shaft. Now, let's just say you don't want this rotation to keep happening, right? See how that rotation's happening and that rotation is happening. Really, the only way to fix this, like if you didn't have two of these together, then this rotation would always happen. We can't basically stop this rotating by just mating it to the hex shaft. It will always rotate. So what we have to do, and this is something that you may do often, but try to avoid doing this because a lot of the time people can use this as like a, a cop out. Uh, and because just because you think there are no mates left, there may still be mates. So only fix things if you know for sure that there are no mates. So now this is fixed together. And once again, I can now fix this, but let's say I want these two squares parallel to each other. I can mate it, shift, let go of shift, and now I'll make them parallel. And as you can see, now these, this is kind of like the perfect, um, these two cubes are on each other and they're in line and everything is fixed. If I didn't fix these two cubes, then I wouldn't be able to do the other side. So sometimes if you can't like make things exactly, you just have to fix them in space. Um, and then basically mate according to that fix. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, once again, what I'll do to wrap it up is I'll press Control S, as it said, I haven't saved it. So I'll save it. Um, this is now my parts. So if I go back to SolidWorks, so I've saved it in robotics, go back to SolidWorks. Instead of parts, I recommend making a new file because instead of a part, this is now an assembly file. So we'll just type in assemblies and we'll save it in assemblies. So now my assembly is saved, it's just called assembly one. In reality, this is just a test, right? So even if um, you're struggling with this, take as much time as possible to figure out mating. If this whole mating process doesn't make sense, uh, don't stress because in the next video, we're going to be mating like a lot of different things together. So this is the third video in the series. The next three videos, we're basically going to be assembling a whole FTC drivetrain uh, based on the rev kit of parts. So if you're uncomfortable with mating for now, don't stress too much because in the next videos, we're going to be going over uh, mating a lot more in detail. Um, but if you're okay with it and you understand how multiple mates can fix things in space, um, then you'll be good to go and you can move on to the next video without any dramas the same way. So that was it for this video. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.